we discovered the secret of what they're building in Andor. May the Force. Force. The Force. 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 The Force will be with you. Always. Welcome to Star Wars Uplink, your place for everything Star Wars gaming, the TV shows, and the movies. Each week we dive deep into two topics from the galaxy far, far away. I'm your host, Sage Goodwin, and as always, I'm joined by Sydney Laurel. How are you doing? I'm good. Today we're going to be breaking down the controversy around Ahsoka's true backstory, what Count Dooku did to join the dark side. Saw Gerrera in Star Wars Andor, what's he up to and what's he been doing, and what Andor was building in the prison. Just you reconsider playing that message for him. Ahsoka's ruined in Star Wars! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> that is definitely how it feels like in the Star Wars community right now, and why is that? So it seems that they've done some retconning, or at least they've been... <sighs> They just, they took out all the detail out of... They're playing very loose and fast. Yeah. I have a couple things on that. One is, it's a shorter story series. I mean, we before we hopped into this, we binged all of the Dooku parts of it. And it took like maybe 40 minutes. Maybe. maybe. Like, if you exclude the credits, you could probably watch the entire Tells from the Jedi in like an hour and 15, I think. Mm -hmm. Very, very easy, digestible show and some things you have to get cut out of. And I think this is uh, something that was released today that we need to be aware of. And Dave Filoni has added his thoughts to the whole controversy. First off, what is the controversy? They're playing loose and fast with the origin story of Ahsoka. They're taking away, like you said, a lot of details around that origin story and some of the specifics from the book that came out in like 2016, like six years ago, called Ahsoka. But this is what Dave Filoni had to say on the topic. I was doing these three pieces, one where she was young, one that covers the formative years of the Clone Wars and her training, and I needed a piece that was somehow set after a result of it. Playing with so much of her history as I have over the years, it was just natural to say, okay, well, I'll explain how she got back into this, Filoni explains. It's based on the same outline I gave publishing for the novel. It was always the same story. On the surface, if you break this down... There are, before we saw this uh, statement from Dave Filoni, I was basically like, well, Tells from the Jedi or Tells of the Jedi, it's very, very forgiving of a title. Yeah. Because they can be like, oh, well, this is just a tale of the Jedi. Like, it's it's like what they tell each other. Right, or it's like, almost like, this could be the oral history of what they, like, just continue on with. Yeah these characters sort of thing it's like mm -hmm. this isn't necessarily fact it's just this is a flowery like this is a quick little tell we'll yeah. tell each other on the campfire yeah that was my first thought about it and i was like okay well obviously the book is the deeper explanation they had more time they can dive deeper into the series and just really show more about what the what ahsoka is doing that origin story you have more time with her in that than you would in uh a short TV show. Um, and then this quote comes out and it's like, okay, so they're both true. How does that work? They're both from the, t I guess, I mean, Dave Filoni has the true answer. He is the god of Star Wars and Ahsoka. Ahsoka especially. So I mean, he created Ahsoka. That's, that's his baby. Mm -hmm. So, but a lot of people are upset because it's like, there are so many different things when it comes to the idea around what is the true canon? Because this is definitely something new in the Star Wars. This is new in entertainment of like everything they said, everything we're creating is a cohesive story. And I think that's what, a, that is what is really cool around Star Wars mm -hmm. is you can read this comic, you can read this book, you can watch this TV show, you can watch this movie. You can play this game, and it all goes into this broader vision of what Star Wars is. It is a galaxy. And then with stuff like this, it really takes that away from things. It doesn't really, it, it, it steps away from everything's cohesive, and it's more of like, well, I wanted to do this, so I did it, without taking into account the work and the, the, the achievements and the time spent with characters and other aspects of things. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting. Definitely cheapens things. It almost, it, it does kind of feel like that. Yeah. With Dave Filoni's 
thought process. He gave the true explanation in this write-up. It's it's like it's like if two people told the same story, which is exactly what this is. Mm-hmm. There is a true story, but there's also how people interpret that story. So there ne- isn't necessarily a true real life right, one. Exactly. Only the characters know that. Right. It's like, okay, so what's the Soka story? Like, what would she, how would she tell the story? Because it feels mm-hmm. like we're getting these two... Like, third-person uh-huh. perspectives. But it uh-huh. definitely seems like the Ahsoka book is the more Ahsoka story. Yeah. Hey, you. Yes, you. Watching this or listening to this right now. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you're watching this on YouTube. Or if you're listening to this, make sure you're subscribed in your favorite podcast app. And be sure to leave us a review. we greatly appreciate it. Now I want to ask you. Mm-hmm. Dooku. Yeah. We got to see Dooku. Yes, we did. And I really like the the deep dives into him and Qui-Gon. And, and ultimately, these three stories are, they're obviously about Dooku. And they add more reasoning behind his his absence and his step stepping down from the Jedi Order. I don't know that it said enough. Mm-hmm. We're introduced to Dooku and a young Qui-Gon. And it's like, okay... So he's already got this tenacity towards violence <laughs> and already kind of just will jump to conclusions and take things into his own hands. Whether he's right or not, mm-hmm. fine. But he has a strong sense of what he thinks is right. Yeah. Um, Which is solid and that's fine. But is that enough to say? Like to something about it was like, it just wasn't enough. Yeah, this is this TV show is so weird because one, it comes out all at once on Disney Plus at the same time as Andor, which I mean, I love animation. I don't have any problems. I think animation should not be a lesser form of media at all. But when you pair it up against Andor, it's like, <laughs> what decision? Like the best Star Wars thing ever created versus short. The, uh, short animation things like mm-hmm. obviously you know what we're choosing and we both love the animated stuff like, absolutely like yeah it's incredible oh yeah it's and great it's one of our favorite things in star wars mm-hmm. um i mean you have way more experience with it than i do mm-hmm. <laughs> it's great. but um, when you pair it up with andor obviously you're going to choose andor so there's that side of things there's the release schedule it's very strange to have i mean if they were going to do it i think they shouldn't have done it at the same day maybe you have like oh hey Wednesday is Andor, and then Friday, you get the animated thing. Right. I, I don't think that they should hold so fast to be like, all of the Star Wars things comes out on Wednesday. Because if you have two shows running at the same time, they're both going to come out at the same time. Yeah. I mean, it could be that they're like, well, this is for like the kids, and this one's for the adults. Like, I don't know. Mm. <sighs> I don't think that's true. No. Like, I mean, yeah. Andor is getting darker for sure. Yes. But... <laughs> but this was pretty dark, too. I mean, that first freaking yeah. episode was... Pretty spooky. And, and even the last one. Yeah. I don't know. I think that's kind of my issue with it, is that there was just this, like, tone throughout mm-hmm. it, and there there was no, like, dynamic range of it. It was just yeah. this, like... It's mo- like, we all know what's going to happen with <laughs> Dooku. Yeah. So let's just kind of tell that. Yeah. There wasn't, like, a rise and a fall. I think that ultimately comes around with how short they were. Like, was there even any music? There was. Yeah, there was. Okay. Mm-hmm. But... I don't know. It just all felt like it was the exact same pace all the way through. And it was just like, you're just getting 15 minutes of story. That's just like this one constant line. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't feel any heartbeats going up and down. Like It was just this like, it was like, yes, this is what happened. This is this. This is that. I really enjoyed it. But I wish it's one of those things. It's like, I'm glad we got it. But I wish you could have gone further with it. Yeah. Like, I'm appreciated, like, appreciative that we have it. But I wish you guys spent a little bit more time with these characters so we could really see that. And it just shows me, like, I want a Dooku show, mm-hmm. like, hardcore. Mm-hmm. How would you describe the three episodes? Like, as far as his journey, Dooku's journey to becoming um, mm-hmm. the Dooku that we know? I think the it's just a bunch of vignettes on how... Dooku came to hate the senators. The first episode, it's against the senator. The second episode, it's against the senator. And then the third, it's almost like against the... Senate. Council. The council, yeah. And the Senate. And you have Yaddle, which I thought was hilarious to see Yaddle in something bigger than just kind of like a side character role. Or in the background. Yeah, played 
by Bryce Dallas Howard, who directed episodes of Mandalorian, yep. who directed my favorite episodes of Mandalorian 2.5. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, it just it's really cool to see something like that happen, and to see a character that we've seen in the background more, uh, definitely more of like a, it definitely seems like there's a lot more online discussion around tells from the tells of the Jedi mm-hmm. than like Andor, which I think is it's it's fascinating to see that those these two things one where you have like people starred for like I saw someone that didn't like Andor and was like oh my gosh tells of the Jedi is the best thing in the Star Wars universe it's like okay good okay for you. buddy um <laughs> I don't see how you can say that when Andor is right there but you do you uh enjoy star wars how you enjoy it Mm -hmm. that's that's my thoughts on it but i think uh i I think it's interesting to see some moments of dooku and his hatred of the senators Mm. and his pieces of hatred coming through to ultimately uh, that's one one gripe i had with it is it didn't really get into him going to the dark side Mm -hmm. it just was like okay we're here now yeah and I thought that would have been more interesting than if, hey, he left it. I did appreciate that it was set, that they did have some time after Qui-Gon's death. Yeah, that was good. But I wish Qui-Gon's death would have been the catalyst to push him to the dark side instead of like, he was already there. Right. And then he was mourning for Qui-Gon as well. It- I would have really loved to see the reason that he was ultimately pushed to the edge was the death of Qui-Gon. Yeah, it definitely would make more sense, especially in a storytelling perspective. Mm -hmm. I appreciate how they did that, like as far as like he's already been considering it. And I mean, I think it makes sense to that they did it that way. Um, Mostly because Qui-Gon isn't his Padawan anymore. Like Qui-Gon has moved on and Dooku kind of needed to evolve as well. Like he mentioned in the, previous episode um and this was just his evolution and mm-hmm. it just led him towards the dark side apparently yeah. um because that was his way and i actually no i yeah i think i stand by what they did do you because um, mm-hmm. well with the with those three episodes of like how they laid it out where it was like seeing the mundaneness hmm. of what these senators are doing and then we got him being like no we need to evolve and we need to become better and no matter what that looks like sort of thing um with the second one and then the third one him becoming the dooku that we know ish yeah. ish he was still in the early days but um no i think it was good i think it made a pretty solid like stepping stepping stones of it i think it i think it checks out and i'm i'm kind of glad that they didn't go with maybe Qui-Gon being the catalyst it would make sense I like it said but I think I think it's good to see Qui-Gon or Dooku already coming into what he believes Mm -hmm. and I think that's the that's just what he would have done yeah no I'm doing this sort of thing and Mm -hmm. I it it, this kind of felt like you were promised uh, a whole plate of wings yeah and you like you you, got three you you got like (laughs) you wanted 12 but they gave they only could give you six Mm mm-hmm that's yeah. kind of how I feel about this. But we we went into this knowing that. Yeah. Well, I mean, back mm-hmm. when it was just promised that we were going to get this, we were like, oh, it's not going to be enough. Yeah. That's not going to exactly. be enough. I love what we got. <laughs> I mean, it just shows how polished the animation style is, the storytelling. I mean, they, they definitely understand that era in a much broader sense than maybe some other things. Because they know Clone Wars, they know Clone Wars. I just question whether or not it sh- should have been made. What is it really adding? Because it didn't really add a whole lot. It was just basically like, here's some things. Yeah. It's almost like, hey, we're we're prepping for Bad Batch season two, and this is something that uh, we worked on as a side project. So here you go. There's not really a whole reason for it, but we just made it. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of how I feel about it. Yeah. Like, I I enjoyed it greatly. I didn't think it needed to be made, but hey. As we get more and more into Star Wars, I think we're going to see more of these kinds of things. We're going to have Andor Wars. It's this deep, like, very much character-driven thing. And then you have Clone Wars doing the Clone Wars thing. And then you have these, like, small vignette things that are happening. You have the movies. You have the books. You have the the games. Like, all of these things they can do as Star Wars gets bigger, as more people work on it. We're going to see more of the things where it's like, did this actually need to get made? 
Not really, but it is fleshing out the galaxy that we know. And maybe it leads you to go to the uh, Dooku books. Right. Or Young Qui-Gon, which I wish we had more of. Mm -hmm. Um, My only... I would mention that, yes, this is great as long as... We respect all the mediums, maybe. Yes. Like maybe don't take, just be like, screw you, books. Yeah, maybe take a look <laughs> at reads? all of the stuff that's already out there yeah. that you've already called canon. Mm-hmm. Maybe understand like if it if you have to cut out so much of it to tell the story that it takes away from a written material or a book or I mean comic or anything like that or even like another TV show or anything like that. Don't yeah. like if you have to slim it down to the point where it's compromising the other creation i don't think it needs to get made Mm -mm. surely there is another way to tell a decent Mm -hmm. through story with ahsoka that didn't tamper with i think it's fascinating too there's been a lot of discourse on like filoni did a great job of setting up the idea and the the visual identity and the storytelling identity of star wars clone wars and a lot of people are like yep nope don't touch it anymore Mm. (laughs) So I think there's that side of things that's interesting to think of. But switching gears a little bit. Yeah. And or. Let's go. I want to say something. I want to give you the credit that you deserve. Thank you. You, we were on. (laughs) Hopefully it's good. We were on an after show with (laughs) Alex and Molly from Star Wars Explained, which you should totally check out. We'll link that in the description. Had a great time. But we are wondering what Andor is making in the prison. It looks interesting. Uh, We were both Mm -hmm. like, we were all like, that looks super familiar. It looks like we should know what this is. And you found it. Uh, I have a theory. I think it's correct. Oh, okay. (laughs) Because we see them all put together and Mm -hmm. they look very similar. And we'll put this graphic up for the video. But I want to describe it a little bit. So in Andor, which I love the episode, maybe one of my favorites, even though a whole nothing really happened. Oh, a lot happened. A lot happened, but not. it wasn't like bombastic. I really right. enjoyed the show. Mm-hmm. But what they're doing is they're creating these uh, like metallic pieces. And you notice, what was it, SWOTOR? Was it KOTOR? This is a very old game. Um, Star Wars Racer. It was Racer. It's Racer. It's okay. Star Wars Racer that made me... Shout out to Eckhart's Ladder. <laughs> he loves that game. Hey. Uh, a- <laughs> um, yeah, so in this, mm-hmm. they show in the background thrusters, right? Mm-hmm. In the shop, you get to customize or kind of choose your, your vehicle, you right? You upgrade your... Your pod racer. Pod racer, there it is. You upgrade your pod racer either through the shop or through the junkyard, and you'll find these parts mm-hmm. that will help certain areas of your pod yeah. racer. And there's one there that I was like... That's kind of the same shape, and yes. like it's got the same. It looks the same, mm-hmm. um, and it's they're smaller for yes. sure. But that's also it's a game, yeah. And it was made in the nineties, yeah, so there's a lot. It's a little rough, a little rough. <laughs> uh, but in the in the game, uh-huh. it shows them in a cluster, and also shows some individual mm-hmm. ones. And in Andor, they show. Individual ones. Individual ones. And then and as a cluster. cluster. As they go through the door. Uh-huh. So, Andor and all of the people in the prison are making engines for things. For planes, I would assume. Spaceships. Yes. Whatever. Something like Whatever that. Whatever they need it for. But yeah, we, we, we discovered the secret ah! of what they're building <laughs> in Andor. And it's pretty cool. Yeah. Nice little like deep cut. Again, another kind of tie-in to video games and Andor. There's been a lot of uh, planets that have been mentioned that are from the video games. There's been a lot of kind of like similar through lines. There's the Rakuten Empire that was introduced in KOTOR. There are many things. There's another, one of the prison planets that they mention in this episode is in SWOTOR, Mm. which is one of the prison planets. Like, super cool to see something like that come from the video game series, variety of video game series into a TV show as big budget and as well done as Andor. Mm-hmm. And le- big budget, well done, maybe not quite performing as well as he used to, uh, Saw Gerrera. Mm, yes. What is he up to these days? 
apparently he's just hiding out. I mean, it would it would seem <laughs> uh, he's just biding his time. You know, just chilling um, in the caves. Yeah, cold again. <laughs> cold caves. The cold caves. We see two tubes again, um, which is the one like assassin alien that always keeps watch outside with a cycler rifle. Looks super awesome. He's super cool. Yeah, really awesome character. Mm-hmm. But hey, Saw Gerrera, one of our favorites. He's Forrest Whitaker's like everywhere, and now he uh, again lends his lo- his looks and his acting abilities into Andor, which mm-hmm. I'm so thankful for. Like Andy Circus was a big cameo type thing. Great job, super surprising to see him. I I was really excited. For yeah, that. that was that was fun. It was like, yeah. oh, oh my look gosh. He is. <laughs> Such a good actor. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Like he just owned that role and made it different from all of his other ones too at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um and then you have Saw Guerrero, which is the big kind of like big cameo. It's the one that everyone was hoping for and we're getting it. We're seeing Saw Guerrero again, who's this radical rebellion leader who will do everything, has very little moral compass now. Mm-hmm. Um I, I want to kind of theorize what he's been up to. I think we'll hear bits and pieces of it as we get closer to the finale of this season because we're I mean, we're up episode eight now. Yeah. So yeah, we we see some really some really fun kind of pieces there with with Saw Gerrera. and um, I want to kind of before we get into predictions, kind of touch touch on what he's been up to. Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. He was he was around in the Clone Wars a lot. Yeah. Was he in Rebels at all? I don't think so. No, mm-hmm. no, they don't deal with those that kind of those kind of rebels. Those, ras- those rascals, rapscallions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So- yeah. So I'm trying to think. So like we see him in, uh, we kind of see his origins in Clone Wars, mm-hmm. where like he's he's getting trained pretty much by yeah. um, Ahsoka, and, and he also Obi-Wan. shows. Uh, I think it's the droidicas where if you like it's a yeah. low impact mm-hmm. thing can make it through the droidica shields. Mm-hmm. He was a huge part of that kind of thing. Very witty and savvy when it comes to kind of combat. Yep. And I, I really enjoyed I've like I can't remember exact if it's true or not, but um I mean we see him in Rogue One. I can't remember if he's introduced in the Clone Wars or if it's the later seasons that we do see him. Hmm. Uh, I'll double check ask I would love to hear it if he was introduced in the Clone Wars and then they fleshed out his character in Rogue One or if it was introduced in Rogue One and then they fleshed it out in the Clone Wars. I can't remember exactly. Uh, if you do know, let us know in the comments. would love to hear that. Um, but we, we see this kind of journey. Mm-hmm. A young kid helping out the, the Clone Wars. I mean, he's he's getting up there in age. By the time we see him in Rogue One, he's lived a lot of life, been through a lot of battles, and he even mentions that there's very little left of him. <laughs> Isn't that his end? Doesn't he, he dies in Rogue One. I believe so, oh, yes. Sorry for anyone who hasn't seen Rogue One. Spoiler alert! Spoiler! Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of like the end of it all. Mm-hmm. So we're getting like the middle. Yep, so this is the middle section. We see... I think later on in his life cycle, we see either earlier or later, um, earlier in his life cycle, we see him in Fallen Order, mm. where he is not quite as beat up. He's bald, <laughs> but he's helping out the Wookiees, and they're going in behind the thing, behind the scenes of a lot of some key moments in in Star Wars and the Rebellion. And then in this one, we see. Definitely, I think they did a really good job of showing him as a younger person. Mm-hmm. I, I really enjoyed the his his wittiness almost. Like he yeah. isn't quite as beat down as we see him in Rogue One. Yeah, yeah, he still has some charm left to mm-hmm. talk to Luthen, Luthen like yeah. he does. It's like he's still got a little bit of patience. I yeah. feel like he's still got this. Like, yeah, I'll put on a little face for you. Mm-hmm. The whole conversation between Luthen and, and Saw, I loved. I thought it was such a good kind of like, we both know we did the thing that we're talking about, but we're not leading it on that we did the thing we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Saw Guerrero is like, oh, I thought that was you. And Luthen's like, oh, no, I wish it was me kind of thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, buddy. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, that totally wasn't me. But yeah, it was totally me. 
Um, why do they? Why do you think they play that game? Because that's so like that's exactly what Mom Mothma's doing and yeah. like all that. Why would they do that? I think they have different goals uh, for the rebellion. I think Luthen has an idea, or maybe. Saw Guerrero suspects that Luthen is behind all of these key moments, but Luthen is uh, playing up his a, a specific character for Saw Guerrero because mm. we see him using a different character when he's talking to Andor. Mm-hmm. We see him use a different character when he's in the shop. We see him using a different character when he's talking to Mon Mothma. We see him use a different character when he's talking to Vel. He is a master of disguise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So I think there's uh, some very, very interesting things there. Why Saw is doing it, mm-hmm. though, I don't quite understand. Unless it's just to mock all of his faces. Maybe. Maybe he that. truly understands what Luthen is and who he is more so than anybody else. Mm-hmm. And is like, yeah, I know who you are. I'll play your game, but just know that you're not fooling anybody. Right. Or not even that, just him being like, listen, I know this is not who you are, Mm -hmm. so I'm going to slap it in your face to either get you to be a real man or to, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Luthen straight up calls himself a coward, coward, which I thought was a fascinating story beat there. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I think there are many different aspects of what these two characters are doing, and I definitely think we're going to see more of them. Mm-hmm. And I think we're going to get further explanation of what Saw's been up to and what his part of the rebellion uprising is up to. Yeah, because they seem to I be... wonder if Luthen funds, like, gets funding for them. Hmm, probably. But he's but he also is selling, selling things. things. Yeah. So maybe not. Mm-hmm. Probably not. Definitely more of the vendor side. He's definitely mm-hmm. playing the same character that he played with Andor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let us know your thoughts on what is going to happen with Saw Gerrera in Andor. I want to know this. Mm-hmm. They definitely seem to be building up to something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's, there's a lot there. And I think... We're going to start to see the storyline that's going to play into the finale. Mm. So I think we have three episodes left in the season because this was episode eight. We've got nine, ten. No, we got four left. Mm. So nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I think next episode is going to be them escaping from the prison and kind of setting up that that struggle. Ten, eleven, twelve is going to be Saw Guerrero gets involved and we start to see his pieces add up to the whole. Mm. Of what he, of what Andor is. I think we could still still see two more episodes of Prison. You think so? Yeah, I think mm. we'll get another one of the build up of the escape to the escape, and then we'll get the escape. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I, th- I think it's going to be similar to what they did with um, the Aldani heist, mm. where we just had one episode dedicated to that whole adventure. Yeah. But there's a lot of build up too. I think there is. I think they'll pay, play with like that first. I think it'll be a longer episode for sure. But I think they'll play with that like first half as the lead up, the kind of building up the plan, the strategy, and then the the later half will be them escaping. All in one episode? I think so. I don't think so. I think they're, they they like to stretch things out and to make you mm-hmm. get a big payoff. But there's nothing things, more they but... can really do in the prison. You want to bet on it? (laughs) Coffee bet. No! (laughs) I'll take that coffee bet. Fine. Dang it. (laughs) Coffee bet. Probably going to (laughs) lose, as usual. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I think think there's going to be some interesting things there. Uh, I think, I, I, I wonder if Andor and Saw will get involved in any way. Mm, I don't think so. Because if it, if they did, I feel like there would have been some kind of Rogue One yeah. thing would have been. There is that side of things where they can't really do a whole lot with the Rogue One. Yeah. And, but is Cassian in the prison when they get locked together? I think they are all together. Yeah. So, yeah, they can't really meet up, mm-hmm. I don't think. No. Unless they play a little bit. Yeah. Into kind of like, oh, yeah, this is. they. He wasn't really there a whole lot. Or he, maybe he was a part of the battalion or whatever, but didn't really talk to Saw Gerrera. I don't know. I'll be curious to see if we really do see anything with Saw Gerrera in 
Cassian Andor. Like, I think we might hear mention of things that he's doing, hmm. but I don't know that we're going to see much more of him. I think we will. Hmm. You can't have Force Whitaker in your show and not u- utilize him very much. Hmm. Um, I think he's going to be there. Uh, I don't think it's going to be as big as we all hope right. or maybe expect, but he's going to be there more for hmm. sure. But I think with that, thank you all so much for listening to this episode of Star Wars Uplink. Again, we would love to hear your thoughts on what we discussed today. What are your thoughts on Ahsoka? What is the true story of Ahsoka? Yeah. What did you think of Tales of the Jedi? Would love to hear your thoughts because I think that's an interesting take on the Star Wars galaxy and the universe and storytelling and how short form Star Wars animated stuff can work. Mm-hmm. I'd love to see more of these like little vignettes told through animation maybe ultimately lead to like their own tv show or something like that dooku a star wars story um yes please yeah would love that do you do you agree with our theory on what andor is building in the prison and are you as excited as we are to see more saw guerrera let us know in the comments or contact at uplinkpodcast.com. You can listen to the show wherever you find podcasts on our YouTube channel. If you want the video video version where we have clips of what we're talking about, you can kind of see what, what discussions are happening and, and much more. And also find some exclusive content on deep dives around lore, the news, and much more as well. As always, thanks for listening and may the force be with you.